Hey, welcome to edX world and another video in the AS A level accounting series. In this video, we're going to study admission of a partner further. Before this, I've already uploaded a video wherein I've discussed overall what are the adjustments to be done at the time of admission of a partner. And I also discussed the revaluation of assets and liabilities in detail. So if you've not watched that video before coming here, make sure you do that. I've given the link in the description box below. And then this video will make more sense. Towards the end of this video, I'll also show you a solved example, the type of questions that are tested in exam. So that there'll be complete conceptual clarity about the accounting entries to be done at the time of admission of a partner. So we've already done until the revaluation of assets and liabilities. In this video, we're going to study about goodwill adjustment, why goodwill adjustment has to be done at the time of admission of a new partner and how the entries are to be done. First of all, understand what is goodwill. Now, goodwill is a good reputation of a firm. Now, that good reputation could be because of multiple reasons. For example, a favorable location, a good management, some customer contracts, fixed customer contracts that will ensure fixed revenues and profits in the future. There, there could be government contracts, there could be a good market share for the firm. These factors would contribute to a good reputation of the firm, a goodwill of the firm and that would lead to confirmed profits in future. That would lead to high profits in the future. So goodwill is nothing but future expected profits without the business putting in any additional effort in future. So goodwill is a direct indication of the profit earning capacity of the business in the near future. So when a new partner is admitted, obviously the new partner will gain some profit share and that profit share will come from the existing partners. In other words, the existing partners are sacrificing their share of profit in favor of the new partner. Now that leads us to the conclusion that in future, the profits that the firm is going to earn, the existing partners are going to lose a certain share of profits and that is being gained by the new partner. So the existing partners will allow the new partner into the firm only if the new partner can somehow compensate the existing partners for the loss of profits that they're going to face in future. See, the new partner will obviously contribute to the future profits of the firm and if the partner is taking a share in those profits, the existing partners won't have a problem. But if the new partner is getting a share in the profits of the firm because of the goodwill of the firm and the goodwill is because of the existing partners, obviously the existing partners won't agree to it unless they are compensated for it. So to compensate the existing partners for their sacrifice of profit share in favor of the new partner, goodwill adjustment entries have to be done. Let me take a quick example and it will be very clear what I'm talking about. So we have an example here. Existing partners A and B, current profit sharing ratio is 3 to 2. C is admitted as a new partner and in future the profit sharing ratio between the three would be 2 is to 1 is to 1. If you realize A was getting 60% profit earlier 3 by 5 and now getting 50% 2 by 4. That means that A has sacrificed a certain share of profit in favor of C. Similarly, B was getting 40% share of profit earlier 2 by 5, now getting only 25% 1 by 4. Again, B has also sacrificed a certain share of profit in favor of C. And C has gained the total share sacrificed by A and B. So goodwill of the firm is, let's say $250,000. This is nothing but expected profits in the future. Let's say in the next three years, the business expects to earn $250,000 because of its current goodwill, because of its current reputation. And not to earn this $250,000, no additional effort would be required by the new partner in the firm. So that leads to the goodwill of the firm and that's how goodwill is valued in general. There are various goodwill valuation models available, but in general, goodwill is nothing but future expected profits. So let us do some analysis here. So if the new partner is not admitted to the firm, what would be the share of the existing partners in future? Obviously, the 250,000 would be divided between them in threes to two, which leads to 150,000 and 100,000 for A and B respectively. If the new partner is admitted, what happens? Obviously, in future, the profits would be shared in the ratio 2 is to 1 is to 1 and they would get 125,000, 62,500 for B and 62,500 for C. I have divided 250,000 in the ratio 2 is to 1 is to 1. So let us calculate the net gain or loss that is happening to the partners because of C's admission. See, A is losing 25,000 profits of the 250,000 because of C's admission. B is losing... 37,500 because of C's admission 
and the total of A and B's loss which is 62,500 is obviously being gained by C. So A and B will allow C into the partnership firm only if somehow C contributes or C compensates them for this loss. So C will have to compensate 62,500 to A and B so that they are indifferent so that they are not at a loss. Now you do not have to do these complicated calculations in the exam. In exam I'll show you simple accounting entries but to have a good understanding of the accounting entries you should know the background. Why is that accounting entry being done in that manner? So let's have a quick look at the accounting entries at the time of admission of a new partner for goodwill. The first entry that is to be done is to create the goodwill at the time of admission. To create goodwill, we will have to debit the goodwill account. Goodwill is an intangible asset. Whenever you want to create an asset, debit the goodwill account. So 250,000 which is the goodwill of the firm in our example. I have debited goodwill with that. And this goodwill belongs to the existing partners only because they are they have contributed to the reputation of the firm. So this will be divided in their old profit sharing ratio between A and B 150,000 and 100,000. We created goodwill. But this goodwill cannot be shown in the balance sheet in the new firm because this is a self-generated goodwill as per the international accounting standards. Self-generated goodwill cannot be shown in the balance sheet. It has to be written off from the books. If this part, technical part is not clear about international accounting standards, it's okay. You do not have to remember all of that for now. You just have to remember that the second entry to be done is, the, is to write off the goodwill after admission. To write off goodwill, we will have to credit the goodwill account and debit all the partners capital account. Why debit all the partners capital account? Because in the new firm, A, B, C, all are the partners. So goodwill have to be written off by debiting all the partners in their new profit sharing ratio, which is 2 is to 1 is to 1. Hence goodwill credited by 250,000 and the partners are debited in their new profit sharing ratio, 125,000 and 62,500 each for B and C. So if you realize the net effect on partners capital, A is credited with 150,000 and debited with 125,000. So the net effect in the capital account is credit 25,000. B, credit of 100,000 in the capital and a debit of 62,500 in the second entry. So the net credit in these account is of 37,500. While for C, there was no credit. There was a debit of 62,500. So C is being debited with 62,500. So net effect is 62,500 debit. So basically C is compensating A and B through the capital account adjustment for the future loss of profits. If you compare this to our previous statement where we had calculated the future gain or loss of profit, you would realize that the amounts are same. So in the exam, you're supposed to pass two entries, one to create goodwill, second to write off goodwill, and that would lead to C compensating A and B for the shares of profit sacrificed by them in favor of the new partner. Let's also understand the effect of these entries in the capital account. In most cases, the paper would require you to make capital account. So if we put the entries in the capital account, credit side of capital account, the goodwill creation entry would appear only in the column of A and B, only in A and B's capital account. And on the debit side, goodwill will be written off in all the partners capital account in the new ratio. And these entries would ensure that goodwill is adjusted through the capital account. Let's directly go and solve a question wherein I'll tell you how to prepare a revaluation account, a capital account of partners and the revised statement of financial position or the new balance sheet after C's admission or after the new partner's admission. So here we have a question on admission. X and Y are in partnership. They're the old partners sharing profits and losses equally. So the old profit sharing ratio is one is to one, each getting 50% share in profits. Balance sheet of the old firm is given. They agree that Z will be admitted in the partnership. So Z is the new partner with effect from 1st June 21. The new profit sharing ratio would be four is to three is to two. They agree that the building would be revalued at 120,000. If you look at the balance sheet, the current value of the building is 50,000. That will be revalued at 120,000. So that will go to the revaluation account. Machinery will be revalued at 10,000. Again, machinery is also being revalued. The goodwill of the firm is valued at 45,000. So we need to do the adjustment entry for goodwill directly in the capital account of the partners. Z will bring in 40,000 into the business bank account as his capital contribution to the firm. We need to prepare the revaluation account, capital account and the statement of financial position. Let us begin with the revaluation account first. 
our non current assets have been revalued in that the first one is building building has been increased from 50000 to 120000 that's a gain of 70000 to the partners i told you in the previous video that any gain on revaluation that is increase in the value of the assets will be recorded on the credit side of revaluation account so on the credit side we will record building as 70000 and machinery has fallen down to 10000 that's a difference of 14000 that is a loss on revaluation if the value of asset falls it's a loss and in the previous video i told you that any loss on revaluation will be recorded on the debit side so on the debit side we will have machinery as the difference 14000 let's record these entries Since the credit is greater than debit here, it, it's a net gain on revaluation. We'll calculate the net gain. We'll transfer the gain to the partner's capital in their old profit sharing ratio, which is 1 is to 1. So we have a profit on revaluation for each partner, 28,000. How did I get 56,000? The difference between credit and debit, 70,000 minus 14,000, 56,000 shared equally and hence 28,000 for each partner. Let's continue preparing our capital accounts. Capital account would begin with the balance brought down for the old partners. That's as per the balance sheet given. And I will also record the profit on revaluation in the accounts of X and Y. The partner, new partner Z has gotten 40,000 as capital contribution to the firm that will be recorded on the credit side of Z's capital. So let's record that entry. Now the only adjustment left is for goodwill. I told you first we need to create goodwill. Goodwill is 45,000 that will be created by crediting the accounts of X and Y in their old profit sharing ratio which is 1 to 1. So 45,000 in the ratio 1 is to 1 and then we will write off goodwill the same 45,000 will be written off by debiting all the partners in the new profit sharing ratio which is 4 is to 3 is to 2. Our entries in the capital account are complete. Let us calculate our new balances, new closing balances and then move on to the preparation of balance sheet. So these closing balances will now appear in the new balance sheet of the firm wherein all X, Y and Z are the partners. So our balance sheet begins with recording the non-current assets and the current assets. Keep in mind that the non-current assets will be recorded at their revalued amounts which are given in which is given in the question and the current asset will increase by the amount that is contributed by the new partner. So let me prepare the non-current asset section and the current asset section and take the total of all the assets. Next, we go on to the capital and liability section. Capital amounts will obviously be taken from the capital account we just prepared, the closing balances. And liabilities, there are no change. Current liabilities remain as per the previous balance sheet. Let us complete the balance sheet, take a total on the other side and see if the balance sheet is matching or no. So we can see that our balance sheet has matched, assets are equal to capital and liabilities. 
this completes our question i hope you've understood this topic well i hope you will be able to now solve questions independently if you've enjoyed the video please like the video please share the video with your friends do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon next in this series we will be looking at retirement of a partner what happens what accounting entries to be passed when a partner retires from a firm thank you for being there i'll see you soon